Okay, so on to the weather report. What kind of trends do we have going into the wider Zen community? Uh, so the first thing is just to say, um, welcome Vates to the advisory board. Um, uh, unfortunately, most of Olivia's crew uh, can't be here today. Um, okay, there's, there's a handful of people here today, yeah. But a, a whole, a big chunk of Olivia's crew can't be here today because their flight was canceled. Um, but the, 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 um, I won't go into too much about who, who Vates are because uh, that'll be covered in, in, uh, in the keynote talk next by, by Charles. Um, so we welcome them to the board at the startup level. Uh, I thought there should be a good chance to quickly review what actually the governance of the Zen project looked like. Uh, so we have the code for the Zen project is all governed by the developers, okay? So we have um, a number of different sub-projects. We have this hypervisor sub-project, the Zapier sub-project, XAPNG, Windows PV drivers, and so on. Each of those teams have their local leadership team. So for the hypervisor, which is what you're probably most familiar with, it's the committers. Um, so the make decisions within each project, and then project-wide decisions are kind of made in a complicated manner, combining the votes of all the different leadership teams. Um, so, uh, however, the project resources are all paid for by the Zen Project Advisory Board. Um, so they subsidize and help plan the Zen Summit, and typically for a physical summit like this, um, uh, they pay, the advisory board itself um, pays uh, about two-thirds of the cost, and then the, um, uh, the, uh, um, <clears throat> the sponsors actually pay an additional you know, bit on top of that, but it's not, it doesn't nearly, nearly kind of cover the cost. They also pay for you know, Zenbits, the test lab, OSS test, the website, um, public relations, um, and so on. So a full member, if that sounds like something you or your company might be interested in, so being a full member is about $25,000 a year plus the LF membership. And if you're a startup member, okay, which obviously means that you have less voting rights, but also restrictions on what sort of a, size of a company you can be, um, you can join for uh, just $5,000 a year, plus the cost of the Linux Foundation membership. Um, so if you're interested in that, um, you can come talk to me, or um, you know, it's, it's actually on the, the Zen Project website. So last year's predictions, I mean, I guess normally weather report people don't make really um, outrageous predictions. They kind of say what's probably gonna happen, and then it happens. So I predicted that, there will be further investment in um, embedded in automotive, and indeed that has happened. So AMD has, um, as you'll see in the next slide, um, made, uh, started to do a big investment in Zen, both on x86 and on ARM. Um, and I said there's a big opportunity for serververt, and uh, you know, I think it's still early days to see kind of what actually happens with that. But the, um, the cloud software group made Zen server as a separate standalone business unit, um, which obviously, uh, you know, I'm not the only one who thinks that there's an opportunity there for, for server revert, so um, that's pretty good. You interview community. As always, we have a, uh, a long tail of diverse contributors. Um, so Zusa is at the top again. So this is emails sent to Zendevel um, since the last summit, okay? So basically th th that includes patches sent, but also reviews sent, um, discussions and help on the list, um, uh, and so on. So the cloud software group, um, AMD has really bumped up their, their contributions. Um, and uh, Vates we have kind of on the, on, the, on the board here for the first time at 3%. Um, a lot of that is to do with the, um, the RISC-V um, uh, port. And, and Visible Things Lab, I th th they, were on the, they were on the board um, last year, um, uh, but this year they're a little bit higher at 3%. So it's pretty good. Um, people. Again, we have a really long kind of tail. Uh, if you see kind of the, the other category, which is anyone who's under 1%, um, you know, that's 26%. Um, Jan is at the top, uh, as, as usual. I think compared to last year, um, <clears throat> like I, I haven't put both slides, things on here to comparison, but compared to last year, I feel like the, the heavy tail is more spread out. Does that make sense? So last year, the, the, there were a lot more kind of 1% and 2%, and now there's a lot more 2 and 3% if that makes sense. So I think our, our community is really diversifying and then we're getting a lot of people who are, um, you know, uh, coming up to speed and becoming more, um, uh, more involved in the project. So that's really good. Um, we have a lot of ongoing initiatives. Uh, so FUSA and S4C, um, AMD has started a multi-year project. Uh, hopefully I'm not saying this wrong. I haven't done the check this with Stefano. To make not only ARM, but x86 safety certifiable. Um, and I looked in, the, looked in the tree, it looks like so far we have um, officially adopted 49 of the Mr. C rules. So correct me if I say something wrong. Um, there's been a lot of work on the Zephyr DOM0, uh, so they have started the actual upstream of, 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 of making Zephyr uh, run as, as a DOM0 for, for under Zen. And there's also um, uh, a lot of uh, work been done on the Zephyr tool stack. 
Um, and I should be pointing out that a, a lot of this stuff is happening sort of, some of this stuff is happening inside the Zen, uh, the Zen.git tree, but a lot of it's happening kind of outside of our normal space. Like a lot of the Zephyr stuff um, is happening kind of on GitHub and other places like that. So it's not as easy to see. Um, there's a lot of stuff <coughs> in the Zen community actually kind of happening. Other initiative, um, Risk Five is making Solidity progress. Um, we checked in the first code for the PowerPC port earlier this week, um, and do we have a Hello World yet? No. Not yet, okay, but soon. <coughs> okay, it boots and it will spin, but it doesn't actually print anything into the serial console yet, but that's you know, coming soon. Um, there's been a lot of work on the ARM MMU, which is a special version of ARM that doesn't have a, uh, uh, um, the, like the page tables, basically. Um, and uh, AMD SEV, again, this has kind of been a slow thing. It's been a thing that's been in progress, but we actually have the hardware secured. It's in our colo. And I understand that um, the funding is secured and it should actually start um, in, in, in the near future. Um, other initiative, <coughs> you know, uh, we've got on-prem GitLab CI runners running. Um, so this should make it easier for companies who have a hard time shipping physical hardware to our data center to be able to yet engage in the, the GitLab CI and testing and stuff and make sure that um, everything works on their platforms. Um, uh, there's been the development of some Rust-based uh, guest tools, um, and of course, Vertio, Hyperlaunch, and, and Live Update are all kind of making sort of slow, slow and speed progress in their own um, <clears throat> in their own fields. So. <clears throat> The next, uh, uh, just kind of a big announcement, is um, uh, I will be stepping back as community manager in the near future. So as many of you know, I um, kind of stepped into this role sort of suddenly um, when Lars kind of uh, suddenly passed away, um, just before the pandemic in 2019. Um, and it's been a really good, <coughs> um, enjoyable time. I think I've done a, a halfway decent job. Um, but basically, I feel like uh, on any given day, I could probably be a lot more productive doing stuff in development than on the community management stuff. So about a year, so a bit after last year's summit, I asked my uh, my team if we could find someone else to, do, to to hire for the community manager role, and we have been doing a study looking uh, a study search for that, and uh, I'd like to announce that um, we have a new community manager. Uh, so she, uh, it's, her name is Kelly Choi. Um, she was a community manager for a kind of professional project, but working with, um, uh, it's a piece of software that's aimed at developers. Okay, so she has worked with developers for a couple of years now and kind of knows how things goes, um, has a lot of really um, enthusiasm, and I think she will bring a lot to the project. Um, she was going to come to this uh, event, actually, but then she got invited to, um, to speak at a different event in, in Israel this week, so she wasn't able to come. But she'll be starting on 3rd July. Um, she should be in Cambridge that week, so she'll be, I mean, she lives in, in uh, Manchester, but she'll be kind of coming to Cambridge once in a while. Um, so if you're in Cambridge, I hope to be able to, you know, arrange at least a, a pub session, um, or if you want to meet with a one-on-one, -on -one, I mean, let me know if we can see if we can try and um, uh, arrange that. <coughs> so, yeah, and hopefully that means I will have more time to do um, engineering stuff. I'm, yeah, <laughs> looking forward to that. So forecast, um, again, I mean, I think basically, uh, a lot of things that, that have been, you know, going are, are going to continue to go. So there's a, I predict, continued growth in automotive embedded, um, a continued, uh, you know, opportunity in the server space. Um, I think if I had to make one kind of more risky prediction, all right, that uh, could happen or could not happen, I think in the next couple of years, um, I think there's a decent chance that Vertio will kind of become the, the new standard in the sense of um, across not just KVM but also in, um, in, in Zen. That basically the, the uh, yeah, so we'll see what happens with that, but that's my kind of forecast prediction, and we'll see how that works. Uh, are there any questions? Yes.